All right, welcome back. This is part two of the induction machines equivalent circuit and maximum breakdown torque video. If you haven't already, make sure you go back and watch part one. We're gonna be using some of the answers from part one to help us solve examples three, four, and five in part two of this video. So for part two of this video, example number three asks, determine the rotor speed at breakdown. So we're not solving for the rated rotor speed N, we're solving for the rotor speed N at maximum torque, or we can say we're solving for N, the rotor speed at B breakdown, same thing. And to do that, we're gonna use the formula in the reference handbook on page 52 under the header 4213% slip in induction machines. That formula is slip equals the ratio of the synchronous speed minus the rotor speed divided by the synchronous speed of the motor. Now, since we're solving for rotor speed N, the first thing we wanna do before we worry about breakdown conditions is we wanna set this whole formula equal to rotor speed N. Now, this is gonna require a little bit of math manipulation, but I promise it's not too bad, and the final calculation or calculator is gonna be real easy. All right, moving things around. First, I'm gonna move synchronous speed to the other side. So I get synchronous speed times our slip equals synchronous speed minus rotor speed. Next, I'm gonna get our rotor speed N all the way by itself equal to everything else. That gives us our rotor speed N equals synchronous speed minus the product of synchronous speed and slip. Now here's where you worry about breakdown conditions. Instead of solving just for the rotor speed, we know that we want to solve for the rotor speed at maximum torque conditions or at breakdown, right? Instead of the rated rotor speed. So in order to do that, we've got to use the slip at breakdown. Now, synchronous speed N sub S, that doesn't change, even at breakdown. Synchronous speed is however fast the rotating magnetic field is moving in the stator windings, which is a direct correlation to the frequency of the applied voltage and the number of poles in the machine. Whether the motor's at a standstill, N equals zero, or all the way at rated conditions, or at the point of breakdown, synchronous speed is always gonna be a constant number. So no change in synchronous speed. However, we've gotta use, instead of the rated slip, we got to use the slip at breakdown or slip maximum torque. All right, last thing we can do with this formula, just to clean it up a little bit, it's not required, but it does make it a little easier to read. I'm just gonna pull out this term right here, synchronous speed since it occurs twice. And now it's gonna look like this. We've got synchronous speed times parentheses, one minus the slip at breakdown S maximum T. That's it, we're done. I told you it wasn't too bad. Let's go ahead and plug in some numbers and use our calculator to solve. So over here on the right, the synchronous speed of the motor was given to us in the problem, 1800 RPM, that's N sub S. So we have 1800 or 1800 RPMs times parentheses, one minus, and we're gonna go ahead and use the answer from example number one, which we already solved for, the slip at breakdown, which was 0 0.139. All right, time to go on our calculator and solve. I've got 1800 RPMs, the synchronous speed, parentheses one minus our breakdown slip. I'm gonna scroll up in my calculator until I find my 0 0.139, there it is. Bring it back down with enter, making sure to be as accurate as possible, including all those decimals in from the calculator. We hit enter one more time to solve, and the rotor speed N at maximum torque conditions or at breakdown, not the rated rotor speed, is rounded to the nearest RPM, 1,550, or 1,550 revolutions per minute. And that is the answer to example number three, the rotor speed at breakdown. Example number four, solve for the per phase and the total, also known as three phase, rotor air gap power in kilowatts at breakdown. So we're gonna use the formula from page 57 of the reference handbook under 424 electrical machine theory for air gap power. 
The formula in the reference handbook solves for three phase air gap power. There's a three included in it. I'm gonna use the single phase version of it first so we can solve for both the per phase and the total rotor air gap power later. So you'll notice in the formula I'm about to write, there's a three that's missing compared to the reference handbook formula. So rotor air gap power is the product of the square of the referred rotor current times the rotor resistance referred to the stator R2 divided by S slip. Same thing as the I squared Z equation, solving for power using only resistance. In other words, the air gap power is the power absorbed exactly in only that resistor in our motor circuit. Now, we need the air gap or the rotor power at breakdown. So instead of solving for just the rated air gap power, we're solving for the air gap power at maximum torque conditions, which means there's two things we need to change to this formula. Can you guess what they are? Well, remember, instead of solving for the rated referred rotor current I2, we need to use the current at breakdown. So I2 changes to IB, and next, instead of using just the rated slip S, we need to use the slip at breakdown or S maximum torque. All right, filling in these values. I already know that the referred rotor current at breakdown is 22.6 amps from example number two. Next, R2, the rotor resistance referred to the stator that was given to us as 1.04 ohms, and the slip at maximum torque at breakdown, we already solved from example number one, that was 0 0.139. So we're gonna multiply the square of the rotor breakdown current by R2 over S maximum torque. All right, let's see what we get in our calculator. I'm going to scroll up until I find my 22.6 amps. And look, that's a complex number. So I only need the magnitude, right? Air gap power is in watts, there's no angle. So I'm gonna go into my complex menu by hitting second complex, scroll down until I see magnitude, those two brackets again, just like we did this earlier for the magnitude of Z. Now I want just the magnitude of IB. So I press enter to bring that down one more time. And that's gonna give me just a magnitude 22.6 amps with all the decimals. I'm gonna square that value and multiply it by 1.04 divided by, again, pressing second to hold my spot while I go fishing for my breakdown slip in my calculator. We're looking for 0 0.139, there it is. Enter to bring it back down. Enter one more time to get my answer. And that looks like about 3,835 watts or since the problem asks for kilowatts, I'm gonna write that as 3.8 kW. And this is the first answer for example number four. This is the single phase or per phase air gap power. Next, to answer the total rotor air gap power, which just means the power in each phase for a three phase motor, all we're gonna do is multiply by three. So to go from single phase to our three phase air gap power at maximum torque, we're gonna multiply our per phase power, 3.8 kilowatts by times three. So easy enough my calculator, all I'm pressing is times three. That's gonna give us our total three phase air gap power at maximum torque conditions or at the moment of breakdown. And again, answering in kilowatts, that comes out to 11.5 kW. And that is the final answer for example number four, the total three phase rotor air gap power at breakdown. All right, last example for part two of this video. Example number five says, solve for the per phase and total output power in kilowatts at breakdown. Now, before we do that, it's important we mention an assumption that applies to this problem. If you've seen the motor power flow diagram, then you know that output power, P out, equals your converted power minus the sum of your shaft losses, which is your friction and windage losses and your stray miscellaneous losses. 
Now, 99.9% .9 of the problems on the PE exam, your friction and windage losses and your stray losses, they're either not going to be mentioned or you're not going to be asked to solve for them. These are really itty bitty tiny losses. So in the vast majority of the problems, you assume that they're negligible. You assume that these losses are approximately zero watts. How do we know it's safe to make that assumption? Notice in the problem, it doesn't make any mention of shaft losses, friction and windage losses, stray losses, or miscellaneous losses. Set them equal to zero, ignore them. And when that happens, P out is equal to P converted. So really in this problem, when they're asking for the total output power at breakdown, we gotta solve for our converted power, P converted at breakdown. And to do that, we're gonna use the formula on page 57 of the reference handbook under 424 electrical machine theory that says converted power is equal to one minus the slip of the motor times the air gap power. All right, once again, I don't wanna solve for the rated converted power at rated conditions when this motor is up to speed. I wanna solve for the converted power during the brief moment in time when the motor is at the point of breakdown, which just means the brief moment of time when the motor is delivering the maximum amount of torque. So to do that, we're gonna plug in the breakdown slip, S max T, for the rated slip, and we're gonna plug in the air gap power at maximum torque or the air gap power at breakdown. When we do that, this formula will solve for instead of the rated converted power, it's going to solve for the converted power at maximum torque conditions. Exactly what we want. All right, let's fill in some values. So I've got 1 minus 0 0.139. That was from example number one of this video. That's our breakdown slip. Next, I've got times our air gap power at maximum torque. That's 3.8 kilowatts from the answer to example number four, right before this example. And just to be clear, that is the single phase air gap power at breakdown. So we can solve for the single phase or the per phase value of our converted power at breakdown first. Okay, back on our calculator, I've got one minus. Let's scroll up until we find the precise value of our breakdown slip. There it is, about one point excuse me, about 0 0.139. Close parentheses, now let's scroll up and find our 3.8 kilowatts. Here it is, bring it back down, press enter one more to solve. We get a value for the converted power at maximum torque conditions in kilowatts per phase is about 3.3 kW. That is the first answer to example number five, the per phase or single phase value or the amount of converted power at breakdown conditions at maximum torque conditions in each phase of the motor. All right, just like before, to solve for the total three phase converted power at breakdown, let's convert from per phase to three phase by multiplying by three. So my calculator, all I'm gonna do is hit times three and we get a total three phase amount of converted power at maximum torque or at breakdown equal to 9.9 .9 kilowatts. And that is the final answer for example number five. All right, that's it for part two of this video, part three coming up. We're gonna solve for the torque of the motor delivered at breakdown using all four torque formulas that can be found in the reference handbook. I'll see you there.